In today's world of rising gas prices, everyone seems to be looking for alternatives. Well, one of these alternatives is much simpler than you think. You can run your car on vegetable oil. Hi, I'm Chase Emmons. I have a 2005 Volkswagen Golf that's been converted to run on vegetable oil. The reason I drive a veggie car is because vegetable oil is free, I get better mileage on diesel anyway, and it's a great hobby. You heard Chase correctly. Not only does a car get more mileage on vegetable oil than it would with gasoline, but the oil is free, collected from restaurants that normally would have to pay someone to dispose of it. The only requirement is that your car must have a diesel engine, and diesel on its own gets about 30% better mileage than gasoline. So why aren't more people driving diesel? Well, one of the reasons is sort of cultural in that over the years, I'm sure most people think of diesel as like smelly trucks and buses and stinky stuff like that. And for a long time, that was kind of true. But inherently, diesel engine gets a lot better mileage than the gasoline engine. And also the modern diesels have gotten rid of the whole smoky, smelly pollution aspect of it. So they're just as clean as gasoline. Uh, in Europe, because gasoline and diesel prices have always been much higher than they have been here in the US, they've always been much more pro-diesel than we have been here in the States. So most of the cool cars you see here, you can get there in just in diesel versions. Diesel has been incredibly common in Europe for years. Right now, you could even go on the European section of most car manufacturers' websites, such as Audi, and place an order for a diesel car today. This car has gone from London to Edinburgh and back again with a V8 engine on one tank of fuel. You might be asking yourself, how can a modern diesel car run off vegetable oil? Well, as long as you heat it up so that it gets as viscous as regular diesel fuel, it'll run on vegetable oil just fine. Rudolf Diesel actually invented the diesel engine in 1902 or so to run on peanut oil, and things haven't changed much since in the past 100 years. Now, there are a couple of different things. There's biodiesel, and there's regular fossil diesel, and there's waste vegetable oil. Waste vegetable oil is basically waste vegetable oil. You take it out of the fryer later, and you filter it so that there aren't chunks of meat in it, chunks of, you know, whatever. You filter all that stuff out of it, you pour it in the car, you heat it up, you feed it to the engine, you drive away. Biodiesel is sort of a hybrid of that in that you take the vegetable oil and you do a bunch of chemical reactions to it so that you end up with something that is a straight replacement for diesel. You don't have to heat it up when you feed it to diesel engine. You can just pour it in your tank and drive away. And of course, regular old diesel at the pump is just regular old diesel at the pump. So what we have here is the vegetable oil that I collect from a restaurant, which they would otherwise have to pay to have hauled off. Basically, they put it back in the containers that they get it in. So this container once had brand new vegetable oil in it. Then they put in the used vegetable oil from the fryer. That's what's in here. What we have to do is filter that so that it's usable in the car and we have to filter out all the gunk. What we have here is the nastiness that you find at the bottom of one of these before you run it through a filter. All right, so what's it take to turn this into usable fuel for the car? First, I take these when I get back from the restaurant and I pour them into these metal drums here. When I need them, or I need to start the process, I filter from these metal drums through this device over here, which filters it to one micron, which means it filters it real good, through this device into one of these white tanks here. So once I actually need fuel for the car, I end up filtering from one of these white tanks through this device one more time into this final drum here, which has a hand-cranked fuel pump, which I use to actually fill the veggie tank in the car. So what we have here is the heated vegetable oil tank. It takes the place of the spare tire. Installed nicely in the spare tire well. It basically holds all the vegetable oil and has a heating coil in it that comes from the engine. So as the engine warms up, it actually warms up vegetable oil as well. Once it hits 190 degrees, I hit the switch and I'm running on vegetable oil. Okay, so when I start driving for the day, I'm in regular diesel and the car's cold and I'll drive until the car hits normal operating temperature, which is about 190 degrees. And I know that by looking at just the stock temperature gauge on the dashboard. Once I hit 190, I know that by default, the veggie oil, which is heated by the engine, is also at 190, so I can switch to vegetable oil and just keep driving. I just have to make sure that when I'm gonna shut the car down and I know it's gonna cool off, that I purge. And purging means that I switch so that it's feeding normal diesel fuel to the engine and pushing the excess fuel and veggie back to the veggie tank. If you happen to shut down in veggie and the car cools off, you run the risk of the veggie actually solidifying and making for it 
either a rough start or you won't be able to start the car at all. So you just need to be cognizant of the fact that if you're going to shut down for more than like 20 minutes, half an hour, and the car's going to cool off, you have to purge before you do it. If it's a hot day, you know the car pretty well, you know it's going to stay hot, you're going to run in the store for a few minutes, you can leave it in veggie and not bother to purge until you're done doing your errands for the day. So how do you actually convert a diesel-powered car to run on vegetable oil? Hi, my name is Daryl Beck, uh, Evergreen Motors, Greenfield, Massachusetts. All right, so if you want to convert a vehicle to run on vegetable oil, it needs to be a diesel engine. Um, and it's real simple. Basically, you have a separate fuel tank and a couple switching valves, and you tie into the factory fuel system. Um, and the switching valves operate which fuel you're going to burn, either diesel or vegetable oil. Daryl converts a wide variety of cars, ranging from old Mercedes to brand new Volkswagens. He showed us this car, which has been outfitted with a grease car co-pilot, a computer that automatically switches the fuel source at the correct temperature. So, are veggie cars the solution to rising gas prices? Future of veggie cars, it's never really going to catch on because people aren't into dumpster diving and spending a lot of time dealing with this, filtering vegetable oil and all the nastiness that that entails. So as far as a general practice, it'll always remain sort of fringe, uh, a lot of people doing it as hobbies, but that's about it. In the next coming years, there are going to be a lot of new diesels on the U.S. market, a lot of cool new cars, but most of them aren't going to be able to have veggie kits installed because of their new emission systems. For me personally, I'm going to keep doing this. I love doing it. I love the fact that veggie oil is free, that I'm paid by the mile for work. I love the fact that I'm not burning fossil fuels and sort of all the issues that are attached to that. And keeps me out of trouble on the weekends, gives me something to do in my free time.